Hello everyone, this is the first video in our Chi 200 uh, Chemical Engineering Principles um, video series. This is a new um, endeavor being taken on by the Ch uh, Ch Chemical Engineering Student Society, specifically the um, Academic uh, Subcommittee. And the goal is to simply, um, and this and for this series, is you know, go over some questions and examples and sort of uh, maybe touch on the theory here and there. And just, you know, to give you a proper idea of, you know, what you're expected to know after maybe a certain lecture or whatnot, and sort of keep on track and help you, give you an idea where you're at, okay? And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, after after your course, you'll have done, you know, really well. And maybe you'll say, man, I did so well because of this guy, Amir, you know, like in 15 years, maybe you'll, you'll come back, I should hire that guy. So, you know, if you ever think that, my LinkedIn page, man, it's out there, you know. Anyway, <laughs> jokes aside. Um, today's course uh, video is going to be on um, data analysis, okay? The question I've chosen here, I think it's 2.42 in your current edition chemical engineering textbook. If not, it's 2.33 in the old edition. And it's also in the video description in the uh, the video, okay? Now, uh, this question, okay, um, talks about the temperature in a process unit okay, is, is controlled by a passing cooling water at a measured rate through a jacket that encloses the unit. And they say, you know, they've, they've tried graphing it as a simple uh, linear equation. It was still curved. They've tried graphing it as a semi-log equation. It was still curved. And then they say, oh, we've graphed it as a full-on log graph, and it's a straight line. Okay, great. That's that's nice. They did it for us. You know, you might have some assignments where you'll have to, you know, go one after the other and prove that it's not a it's not a simple linear slope. It's not a simply semi-log. Okay. Now the math in this question uh, is not too is well. It's more than what you know. Maybe more complex, I'd say, than what you'll see later on. Okay. It definitely you got to know your lawn and your lawn tricks and whatnot fairly well. Okay? should know the sort of uh, how to manipulate exponential equations okay the basic form of this okay and this is um, t temperature is equal to some constant a times phi which is the flow rate in this case to the power of b now this equation is a very sort of uh, a, s a slimmed down version if you will of something like our Ar arrhenius equation okay and you should know Arrhenius' equation, and in this description of the video, I'm going to post maybe one or two links to problems of Arrhenius um, equation. And you know, you should be able to. The goal of this afterwards, or later on after this video, you should be able to know how to find like if they give me a t and phi, I can find a and b, no problem. If they give me a and b or a and t, I can find phi and b, no problem. Okay. In this case, they give us very nicely two. Uh, two sets of data, two pairs of data, and we have two unknown. So therefore the question is right away it's solvable. You know that, okay? And you got you know you got to be able to find in our Arrhenius equation, you know, maybe if it's more complicated, you got to be able to again to manipulate the equation the way you want it to get what you want out of it, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, we're going to try and linearize this equation, okay? To make it easier to use. Now, how do you linearize a exponential growth equation? You simply lawn the entire thing, okay? And when you line lawn the entire thing, okay, you get this. You get lawn t is equal to lawn a plus b lawn phi, okay? Now make sure you know that um, yeah, the product uh, that when you lawn an exponent, an exponent, it becomes a uh, coefficient in front of the lawn bit, okay? Not too complicated. Um, right after that, we're going to simply plug in the two sets of data that was provided to us. And we're going to get these two lovely equations here. That ln 210 is equal to ln of a plus b ln 25. And ln 120 is equal to ln a plus b ln 40. So now how do you you're saying how do we, how do we combine this, um, how do we combi combine these two equations that we made? Well, all we do is we take equation 1. In this case, I'm going to make him number 1 on the top. And you're gonna take equation two. You're gonna take equation two and have it uh, and have equation one subtracted from it. Okay. So if that wasn't clear, we're gonna say two minus one. Okay. And 
that way we are using all the information that was provided to us. So very easily, okay, you're going to get something that looks like this. ln 210 minus ln 120 is equal to bln 25 minus bln 40. Now, we subtracted equation 1 from equation 2, uh, the ln a's simply canceled out. So that was great. It eliminated one of our unknowns. Now all we have as an unknown is simply the b. We have just one b that we need to figure we need to isolate and figure it out. Now if you do the math, you simply you can factor out b here, okay? And then we're just going to isolate it very easily. And you should get that b is equal to negative 1.19. Now, right now don't worry about the sig figs or anything like that. We're going to worry about that at the very end, okay? Just try and keep as many numbers as you can in your calculator by simply pressing uh, answer, answer, answer over again, the reuse, okay? All right, cool. We have finally got a B. Now we got to say, oh, we got to get that A, okay? So we, we go back to our old equation that we had uh, up here. Ln, uh, choose one, doesn't matter which one. We're going to say ln 210 minus uh, is equal to ln of a plus uh, our new b that we found negative 1.19 uh, ln 25 now if you bring uh, bring the one negative 1.19 ln 25 on the other side you should get for ln a if you've kept all of your numbers properly in your calculator and reuse them perfectly you should get uh, 9.1797. And if you do the, now, okay, we've got it in ln of a. We obviously, we just want a, okay, the coefficient itself. So you're simply going to take the inverse of ln. Now, what's the inverse of uh, ln? It's the e to the power of x, okay? Or e to, uh, you're going to e to the power of this answer, okay? And if you do that, you should get that a is equal to, 9,698.27. Now, um, this question or this whole, these functions, ln and whatnot, um, a little point decimal difference in like ln of a, let's say if you had put ln, if I had put 9.18 um, instead of 9.17, or even it, or even the fact that I had b as negative 1.19, or it should be like negative 1.1906, and and with further decimals, that little difference when you do the inverse can be like three to four hundred off difference. It's it, it's a big difference. It really is. And um, obviously though, um, don't don't worry about it in a test as long as you put your steps nice and clear. The TA or Dr. Berg, you know, he'll see clearly, you know, that you have the right steps and it's simply sort of a little bit of rounding issue. That. So now we have found our A and uh, yeah, that pretty much is question part A done for this. Okay. We should finish writing the original equation. The original equation was at 9698. Um, um, two seven uh, phi to the power of our b that we found. In this case, the b was negative one point one nine. Now, this is obviously this is not the um, correct number of sig figs. They gave us numbers with uh, three d numbers or two. So yeah, we could we could probably simplify this down to nine six. Uh, yeah, you don't know this would be, yeah, this would be precise enough. Now, part B states that they give us some more um, three new pieces of data. Okay, uh, they give us three new um, temperatures. And they say, hey, you know, using your nice new equation you found that you're so good at, um, tell us wh what you get for these uh, three, what flow rates you get for these three temperatures, okay? Now, simply a matter of plugging in that 85 degrees. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to do the first one, and I'm going to show it properly. Okay, and so 
we simply want to isolate our lovely phi. So we say, okay, 85 divided by 9698 is equal to is going to be equal to phi to the power of negative 1.19. But that's you know that negative one there, that negative number is kind of it's kind of confusing. So what's the opposite of a negative one? Is you know you do the inverse. We're going to get rid of that stupid uh, negative. So we flip our number here. So we're going to get 9698 over 85 is equal to phi to the power of 1.19. Now how do you get an ex get rid of an exponent? Well you do the 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 root the 1.19 root of phi and the left hand side so you're going to get this lovely uh, setup and if you whoops that's a wrong number if you plug in plug in these numbers to your calculator you should get 53.5 liters per second okay now I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do the whole elaborate thing again because I, th I think you should be able to handle that. But the answers for the other temperatures at 175, 21.1 liters per second, and for the 290 degrees, okay, you should get a whopping 19.0 liters per second. Wow, that's a lot of flow. Now, here's the next question. C, okay. So you see the the estimate for the temperature once. Uh, the estimate here, um, it's all empirical data, okay? And what you got to realize is that whole thing about interpolation and extrapolation. Now, those are very important things for chemical engineering, especially if you work in a lab, you know. The thing is, is that interpolation is using numbers that was in your, your data set. Those are going to be considered more precise, more legitimate. While if you use extrapolated data, Maybe by some chance it might work, but you cannot, you should not scientifically, if you want to be considered a, prof a professional, you should not be extrapolating data because you can be, it can be risky. Um, things could go haywire and you don't want to be responsible. So the question says, which of the three estimates in Part B would you have the most confidence and in which would you have the least confidence? So very easily I can tell you the most confidence I'm going to have is obviously the 175 degrees because it's between the data that we were given, which was 210 degrees Celsius and 120 degrees Celsius. The other two data, 85 degrees Celsius and 290 degrees Celsius, they fall out, out of our sample and they are considered extrapolated data. They are unsafe. They should not be used. There you go. All right, folks, that pretty much um, finishes up with the question. Um, from this video, you know, you should be able to manipulate any sort of empirical uh, of the types of you know simple a simple uh, linear equation uh, or semi log or a full on log question like we just had. Uh, now the other thing you want to also know, okay, so this you know this shouldn't be this should be this is an easier question you know than what you would maybe face in a test or whatnot or in your assignments, okay, so. Uh, how would I recommend you to maybe take this further? I would really encourage you to do some Arrhenius. I believe that's how you spell his name. The Arrhenius equation, okay? Um, very similar to this question, but it's, you know, it's just a step up. And you should know how to do the same procedure with that, with those different sort of, uh, exp the exponent is so somewhat more complicated, okay? Uh, ex Arrhenius equation, you should have learned it previously in either CJEP or uh, I guess they teach it at the McGill U0. I hope so. Um, um, so this was, you know, this was temperature and liquid. Another way they could maybe twist this around is maybe with some bacteria multiplying, you know, is it, is it linear growth, is it exponential growth, you know, is that double time? Remember that stuff? So yeah, that pretty much concludes uh, today's uh, video. Um, there's going to be videos for the other subjects you'll see later on through your semester. And I uh, hope you feel more confident going through. All right, guys. This is Amir, and I'm signing off. See you all.